I'm back with another one. I hope you're good. I hope you and your family are well. Um, this one is a gambling addiction real life story um, edition. We are joined today by Alex, who is from the Invisible Addiction channel and podcast. And he has, um, we're very grateful to Alex for joining us. And he's agreed to tell his story and have a little discussion about the lengths and the depths in what gambling addiction can can take you to. Um, so without me rambling on further, I will introduce Alex over and uh, if you want to tell us how it all started, Alex, and, and your story, and then, like I said, we can hopefully have a little bit of a discussion and hopefully this helps even just one person. No, definitely. Thank you. Um, hi, Kieran. Um, thanks for the invitation and... Uh... It's, yeah, it's a pleasure to be on the on the channel and um, to tell my story. Um, so, yeah, gambling um, for me it kind of um, it started when I was a kid. Um, so, kind of I was betting um, as early as I don't know about thirteen when we used to go over to Ireland on holiday, um, betting on on the greyhounds and such like. And um, yeah, it used to be a big part of sort of growing up. Really, had a granddad that liked to bet. Would uh, would be playing cards, you know, the pennies as as it were around the uh, the Christmas table at Christmas. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm from a place called Newbury, which is quite famous for like the horse racing. Yeah, um, and it's got like links um, to like nearby training stables like Lambourne and High Clear and places like that. And um, sort of 15, 16 is when you kind of first go to the, the races um, in, in Newbury. It's like a big, big, big day, like the whole town is like buzzing. And um, yeah, so you kind of get dressed up. So we'd start going to the races then, you'd get people to put bets on for you and things. Um, wasn't a problem at all, wasn't really hooked, I wasn't just it was just a thing wasn't it betting really and then um around sort of 17 18 at sixth form of school um would start to on our like free periods or during lunch and stuff we would go um not only to mcdonald's but we'd also go to like um the bookies and football accumulators were a big thing um and also because of the links maybe to the horse racing it seemed like quite a natural step um to sort of go in, some of the older lads would be in the bookies, so you'd be like, oh, well, I'll, I'll go in as well. And um, was, would make a few bets. Um, horses, rubbish. I don't think I ever really want a horse racing bet. Um, just would go off the name or the colour. Um, and then football bets, accumulators, I was rubbish. I was rubbish. Um, just, yeah, so bad, so bad. And then I remember it... Um, my friend was in the corner on what we now know as the fixed odd betting terminals. He was playing roulette. But at the time, I, I didn't know what that was. I just thought he was like trying to check out the odds or something. And um, I went over to him and I just like said, what's, what's this? What are you doing? And um, yeah, it was the roulette. He said, like, put a pound in the machine, pick five numbers, 20p on each number, see if it spins the wheel, see if it comes in. And um, it did. My number black seventeen came in, mm. and that number <laughs> became sort of unanimous for the next <sighs> ten plus years. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, that's how it really kind of got started, really. So yeah, I mean, when you when you look back to those early days in which you you, you speak of there, where you're going in the bookmakers and you you looking at football accumulators and you, you're saying you haven't, didn't really, weren't really good. Um, but I've heard yourself in them sort of times where you've said that you went over to your friend, like you you say, and you sort of learn what the Fobty machines were about and roulette and that. I've heard you say before you, you, you've you put a pound on and you won £7.20 back. And yeah. I think... In the wider scale, the bigger picture, even even if it is only a small win in terms of seven pound, it's enough sometimes to 
for his mindset to think this is easy. This is, you know, it doesn't always have to be a massive, massive win to start the the beginning of the downfall, if you like. And it's interesting as well when you say um, you're from sort of a town with a race course and. Um, and as you said, when you were going into sixth form and you go into the bookmakers and your friends were gambling, um, I've touched on it in my story as well. In that environment, and there's a race course near here where I was brought up as well. And um, in that what environment, course is that? Doncaster. Doncaster. Yeah. And in that environment, I think what also is quite dangerous if it's not looked at and looked at and looked at properly by parents is that gambling can become normalised and it sounds like in your situation in that environment although it's not their intentions to to potentially send you in a in a the way it turned out um the norm gambling being normalised is an everyday normal thing in the wrong hands it can it can lead and help an addiction take place and, and take hold, should I say. Um, and I think with your story, it certainly sounds like that, that it was normalised and maybe in that respect, you know, you didn't think this is dangerous, this is really, um, this could end up bad. And I think the more people are spreading the awareness of what gambling addiction can do, maybe can help people to get that balance in between yes it's normalised but also here's this here this is what it can do. Um and I think you doing your channel as you are, which is some fantastic content on there. I messaged you the other day, you know, saying um hearing what you put out and it, it's only a good thing. Um but I just wanted to know your thoughts on that. Um in terms of children and, and younger adults like yourself at that stage, do you think having that environment where gambling is normal does play a part um, further down the line perhaps, or at least to get you started? Yeah, I think it's a really good question and um, I, think, I think you're quite right. I think uh, the situation that I was in... Um, it was just quite natural. It was quite a natural thing. Um, like I say, I don't know if it was just because of the horse racing background and things that, like I said, the normalisation of it. Um, I don't know if it's to do with peer pressure. I don't know whether it's to do with um, a rite of passage, feeling like a man. Yeah. Because you go into business um, pretty much for, just full of blokes, young and old, yeah. um, like a bit of a hubbub of community. Uh, of the community, um, you've got the old old fellas with the racing post, and you know, in there all day or whatever. And you can't you can't knock that if that's their sense of community. It's great, but um, yeah, the normalisation of it. I mean, obviously, we could talk probably all day long now about the, the the betting companies on the the sports sponsorship logos and stuff, yeah. um, which is a big topic uh, for debate at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 yes, yeah, so it's a weird one. It's a weird one. I mean, growing up, yeah, growing up then, um, it was a lot different to what it is now with technology and things like that. So, and access yeah. is only getting easier um, to gamble yeah. as well. And um, we look now, and even on your um, if you've got a fire, Amazon Fire Stick, you can even gamble on. Apps really? on that, yeah, yeah. And I, I discovered that while I were while I were in my end game of gambling, you know, internet app on there, and you can sit on a massive telly watching you. But there's, oh the, you know, that's a mirror in your phone to big TV, so you can literally gamble from yourself uh, like you're watching television, but <laughs> losing lots of money. I just think the access to it is is unbelievable, and yeah. um it's also very dangerous. Um, so just on your story then, so as we go forward in your story, you start to, um, obviously you were speaking, you was a sixth form and a college, you, you start to earn money from drum lessons and um, the hot shots, fo is it football league that you sent up, set up? 
Yeah, um, that's right. That came, that came a little bit later, but at this point I was still... Um, I've been doing some refereeing for, for, for soccer sixes for what, they're, for what they're worth. Not that I'm bitter or anything. But, <laughs> yeah. but with the money coming in, be it from drum lessons or from... You, you were starting to earn a little bit of money and um, you, you, you sort of started feeling as though going to casinos um, was a... a it, the way... It, to me, it was anyway, and I don't know if you'll feel this way. It it was almost um, like someone getting in a bath and having a glass of wine. It's your time, if you like, your your time to whatever unwind or to to just indulge in that environment and and enjoy it until it starts to go wrong. Um, yeah. And it, is that how you felt at that time when you started to visit casinos and? And obviously, eventually, started to um, lie about going to the casino to to your friends. And um, at that point, I think the question I'm asking is: Was it the sort of safe place your your time where you felt, yes, this is about me and no one else, and no one else in a, in a nicest way possible, no one else matters at this very moment. Mm. And it. Uh, yeah, I, I know what you're saying, definitely. I think um, it very kind of... Uh, so so I, was at, I was at sixth form, 18, and then I went to university, and I didn't... I gambled, but not not, not really. I was up in Leeds, um, not too far from, from yourself, I guess. Uh, Sheffield, Doncaster way. But, um, yeah, I wasn't really gambling. And then I got a job in London, and it was about 21, 22, and... I decided I was going to the bookies at lunchtime. I had like a quite a well-paying graduate job salary, um, more money than I'd ever had before. Uh, like I say, money in the back pocket. Um, and then I was really bored. It was 20, 2012, the Olympic year, and yeah. um, I was living with this crazy Irish woman who was, um, yeah, she was like hardly around. I was living in central London, um, uh, in, in Chelsea, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> You know, very posh. A far cry um, from where I'm from, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh god, it was it was just she kept like stuffed birds in the wall. It was just so yeah, <laughs> it was just so so bizarre. But um, but I was like I was on my own. My girlfriend was still up in Leeds at the time, and um, I was just bored. I had money. I was bored, and I was able to get to work really easily. So even though I was doing like nine to five, I was. I was leaving my house at 10 to 9, getting back at 10 past 5, and um, I would go at lunch. It was like I was doing my like apprenticeship. I would go at lunch. Um, there's this famous lane near St. James's Tube. I can't remember what it's called for the life of me now, but it's got full of baguette shops and stuff. So I'd go for an hour, for an hour's lunch break, and I'd get into the bookies, William Hill. And I was a young kid, but there were, you know, as I say, older guys, 40, 50, high-flying businessmen, from what I could gather, playing the roulette machines with like thousands of pounds on their credit. And I was like, okay, yeah. all right, let's go, let's go. And I would just watch at this point. I don't know if you remember, you know, go to the bookers or whatever, but you'd always get those people that would hover around you and just yeah. watch. I used to be watched and watch. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, it was just weird kind of situation, really. But I would be watching. I'd just be there with my baguette and crisp, and just just kind of watching and just tuning in. Like, right. So, what numbers are they picking? When this number comes in, what are they doing next? Yeah. What's their method? Like trying to suss it all out. So, it's almost like gambling research, if you like. Yeah, it was like yeah, yeah, like mark, yeah, research, market research, whatever. And um, so, this point, I suppose, to touch on your point, it was just like this independent hobby it's like well no one knows about this I'm free I'm in London yeah. I can just do what I want and as I said it's the Olympic year so I was just really excited there was a lot of buzz in the city getting on the old Boris bikes and I was just like bored and just having a bit of an adventure didn't have any mates at the time that you know that I'd sort of you know see apart from at work going for work drink or whatever and then in the evening I was like well how about the casinos like I'd been to the casino once or twice with my mates back back home when I was eighteen, but I was like, "What? 
the bookies, I was like, the bookies is all right, but the machines, it's like, let's just, just experience the casinos. So Leicester Square, that's when I went in, and um, they were showing the football on the big screen. It was 2012, I think it was Ukraine Euros. I can't remember, Ukraine, was it Ukraine with? I can't remember who it's joining with now. But anyway, it was on the, bar, on the top bar at Empire Casino. I just went in, and it was like a whole new world. It just felt like you're walking into like the underworld. Um, like all these sounds, like people smartly dressed. Yeah. And it was literally like stepping into what I felt at the time was a movie scene. I was like, geez, this is it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it, it, it was very secretive and it was very like nobody knew about this. I was completely anonymous. Um, nobody, I didn't know anyone there. They didn't know me. There was a lot of tourists. It was just really transient. So it was really weird because you were there, you were alone but you feel like you're around and being social with people. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's when it started to kind of take wind, as it were. And yeah. I really like casino-based. So the, the three things, really, that stand out to me in what you've just said is that, um, probably already touched on it, but you had time, money, and opportunity. And the three together... Um, and I say opportunities in you've got somewhere to go and gamble where no one knew you, you know, it's a safe place. It To me, those three put together a, a really dangerous combination when, um, even when you're just starting out, because if you do have that one big win, as we saw, you, you know, you mentioned earlier, winning £7.20, it doesn't take a lot sometimes to become up. But then if you have a big loss, you may start chasing. And not everyone, you know, I'm not trying to tell everyone with the same brush. Some people will be able to go to a casino, play, walk away and not go for a week or whatever. But I think as it starts to take hold, I'm sure you're going to touch on it, it, it then starts to where you're doing it more frequent and it's getting out of hand and you're telling maybe more lies to cover to cover what you're really doing and then you, you're struggling to admit to yourself you've got a problem and so it really starts to to set in and I think that's why again I, I talk about it all the time we need to sometimes break the cycle and and break that cycle of time, opportunity and money and, and by doing the same things we're just, we're just getting deeper into it almost if we don't try and seek help and break the cycle and I'm sure if anyone's listening to this they can relate to certainly what you've said so far about your story and and um, maybe they can reach out and get help you know I um, hope so I, I think it's a really good point it's like uh, the opportunity that, what, what was it you said so it was a time money and opportunity time yeah time money and opportunity and by opportunity um, you know in my opinion it's you've got somewhere to go and gamble. Obviously lockdown's a bit different at the moment. You've got somewhere to go and gamble where no one knows you, you're not answering to anyone. Um, you, you, you can you can lie about where you're going if you like, which obviously in your case turned out to be the case. And yeah. even without going to a casino, you've got opportunity in terms of online websites. And I think that's why if you are struggling, I've done a, a video where I talk about GamStop, which helps uh, you to, to close your online accounts and, and, and such. So, but yeah, I think time, uh, money, and opportunity, it's just a lethal yeah. combination. And Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was, it was, de yeah, it was definitely lethal for me. Um, In wrong, that's like, you know. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, the, 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 the border, the, the excitement, the boredom, all of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, the, I, I mean, I always considered myself, or well, did sort of still do, but like a bit of an extroverted introvert. So when I came home from school, I'd always be straight up to my room doing my homework. I was very insular, you know. So gambling kind of, I felt like it suited me because it was like, well, this is my own thing. Nobody needs to know about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, after after that, I then. I'd set up Hot Shots Football, like I say, with yeah. John Lessons as well. So I'd left London, I was like, I don't want to do this shirt and tie job. It wasn't for me. Um, to sort of chase my dream, as it were, to be a musician, that's really what I wanted to do. It was always drums or uni, and I, I chose uni, but then I've come back to drums. But um, 
started teaching a family friend the drums. Um, things kind of picked up quite quickly from there, picked up some students. So I was self-employed. I, I ran this Hot Shots Six Aside Football League. I was working like 15 hours a week, maybe, 22, 23. I was on a good wage. Again, I was on a good wage, but yeah. not working that much. So I had time. Like I said, I had money yeah. and had that opportunity. So, um, yeah. And then I remember, I, moved, I mean, honestly, <laughs> this story is so long-winded because it's just... In summary, it's just me going in and out of London. I move in London, I move out of London. Um, 23, I move back into London. I've gone on tour um, uh, with... Uh, I, I was doing some tour management. So I, I, just, I just felt like the dogs, bollocks. Am I allowed to... Is that swearing? Am I allowed to... Say that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is that even swearing? Yeah. But I just thought... I just thought I was the dogs. Yeah. And... Um, it was it was a support band going on a support tour with the 1975 who had just gone to number one had a sold out tour we were you know, with the support band but being around that environment was just unbelievable yeah. you just felt even though I was nowhere near that I just felt like it was God's gift you just feel invincible you know you're helping setting up your stage and there's like thousands of people it's just like this bubble and I came off there and moved into London and Tinder had just come out and I was like properly like young free single invincible yeah and i was just ca- i was just careless mate absolutely careless um i moved to london and i was still working being self-employed but now i was in london so that opportunity grew like you say we've had time had money but the opportunity was massive because then from the january 2014 to june 2014 I did unre- like unbelievable amount of damage for me, like yeah. to my fine. I know, every, like you say about the seven pound twenty thing. It's 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 mine. It's seven pounds twenty for goodness sake. It's not much, but off a pound or off twenty p that bet, I can't do a maths now. But that's what thirty odd times thirty six. Yeah, yeah, Is it seven, right? So um, that that's huge. So that first big win. I mean, I've listened to and spoken to a lot of other people about their gambling and stuff but that first win is that, that first winning bet um, but anyway I'm getting sidetracked but yeah that, that six months I did a lot of damage um, to me financially I basically was then lying to my housemates was lying I'd come back from work well Alex where are you going it was like a Monday night half ten oh I'm just getting the ch- I'm just going on a Tinder day I mm-hmm. wasn't I was like headed into central London I spent not every night at the casino, but a lot of times at the casino, spent all night there, spending several hundred pounds in one go. Money just lost its value. Um, I remember just winning, having some big wins, well, big wins for me, getting paid in like 50 pound notes, flash in a blue bag, just like, and then that wore off, I was like, well, whatever. And I was just trying to make ends meet with the bank. Yeah, you know, and then I, I lost thousands of pounds, about ten plus grand, which was which was astronomical for me. Yeah, um, in that in that six months, and that's that's really when I started to sort of the shit hit the, you know proverb yeah you know, the proverbial shit hit the fan. Yeah, then I had to move home um, with the tail between the legs, and um, I had to, had to lie to my parents, I had to borrow money from my parents. I didn't tell them what it was about, um, and that was. I had, to go, I had to get a job at pret a to just make her pens meet. Uh, I was working like ridiculous hours just to pay a little bit of rent. And uh, yeah, sorry, mate, I'm rambling. <laughs> no, ramble, I don't know, you know, if, I think... <laughs> you, you've got me started now. <laughs> I think when you, just to touch on something earlier you said in that, is you, you felt like the dogs... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bellows. Um <laughs> and the thing is, I wanted to know from your experience, again not really generalising, but in your experience you know how you felt that way and you were confident and and sort of I'm the man. Do you think that also plays a part psychologically where you feel as though when you are gambling you you even if you lose, you're going to win, you're going to win big, everything's going to be okay. Do you think it sort of gives you a false sense of confidence in that respect and 
and to people out there if if they maybe have that similar mindset and and can quickly come unstuck do you think it plays a part or do you think that's maybe wide of the mark i just be interested no, no, to know I your opinion really, i think that's a really good point i think it does i think it does play into it um um Again, I don't know if it, I've, always, I've always been quite sporty, so um, I got released as a footballer at 16. Um, that was a massive chip on my shoulder. Um, I carried with me, like, I just felt really like self righteous and, oh, I could have been a footballer and all this sort of stuff. No. Like rubbish. Um, but that, that the competitiveness, like you say, all right, I've lost, but no worries, I'm going to win the next time. I, the, no. the win is just around the corner. How many times did you think that, right? You know, like, it's gonna, it's gonna cut. You know, yeah. just study. Look at those. The amount, you know, the amount of time I must have just spent looking at the roulette numbers on the, the casino. You know, right, thirty fourth has come out. That's come right. This is bound to come out. And you know, and you're just looking at it, and just it's just crazy. But yeah, you're right. That kind of that egotistical, like that. I'm gonna win. I'm good. You know, and even. But then, of course, it then slowly wore off because it's like, well, even when I what, you know, even when you win, well, I'm not happy because it's not enough or. Yeah, well, I might get another win, and then it just became this massive void of like nothingness. I think that that's important as well. You know, when you said then that when you have a big win, it wore off. You wanted more. Um, just yeah. just as a quick example, like I used to be happy winning fifty pound, hundred pound. Um, in in the in the end days, I was sort of getting to balances especially online where it's not physically you can't go to the window and cash get the cash um i'm i'm getting to balances of three and four thousand pound and i'm thinking i'm thinking this just for talking sake three thousand this could make a real difference we could perhaps move we could pay bills rent that we eventually got evicted for um but then I thought, if I can get to six, that's four or five months rent and a car, because yeah. we need a new car. And then I start thinking, and to a lesser at scale, um, I remember being in bookmakers, and, and I won. Uh, I, I try not to go into figures too much, but I won sort of the maximum five hundred pound. And I remember thinking on my way home, I want a McDonald's. So I thought. I, you know, I'm a big lad, I want my food, but I want bookies to pay for it. So rather than think I've won £500, that I could I could have a, a year's supply of McDonald's on the bookies, I win the extra £10 because it's a tenner for a big lad like me. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> and you know what's coming, you know what's coming at, from winning £500 and wanting £510 to, to pay for McDonald's on my own, I lost the £500. In trying, oh, in trying to God. achieve that tenor, <laughs> and it's it, just it's 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 mad, it's mad. it's really really weird you say that because I'm just sat here because I'm related so much to that. That's I would be at the casinos and it would be it was in China, it was near Chinatown, Soho, Piccadilly, Leicester Square. You know, it's all kind of more like one moulding melting pot. But yeah, the amount of times I would like win or lose, I would be like even if I'd just done several hundred pounds, I'd lost a lot. I'd still go and have a Chinese takeaway <laughs> and a pint of beer and a six quid or whatever it was. But it's just, yeah, it's just really weird how you, how you talk about, well, you rationalise it, isn't it, like you say? Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, I, I, I talk about it yeah. smiling and laughing, but obviously there's a serious no, um, I know, I know. tone to it. I, yeah. I think in my case, sometimes, um, I mentioned in a vlog over there, I still struggle with the guilt and... Um, sometimes I have to laugh, otherwise I'll, I'll cry. But yeah. it is, yeah. I like, like you said, you know, when you hear other gamblers talk about their or addiction in general, but in our case, gambling addicts talk about their um, story. You find yourself relating a lot, and that's that's my hope. Certainly, in these videos, that people can relate, and if they can, they can maybe take 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 from it one or two bits that we think. Yeah, that he did that. That might help me, sort of thing. Um, and at very minimum, as I always say, my channel followers will be fed up with me saying it. They won't feel alone. Um, yeah. But yeah, just on that, on the open and, and taking bits and things. Um, is there anything that stands out to you that you would 
sort of recommend to people who are struggling with gambling, especially with this lockdown at the moment. Um, obviously, they've got time on the. Some people might have time on their hands, but the other side of it, the financial impact that maybe they've lost their business or their job, um, and they they thinking gambling's a way out. Is there any advice that you'd like to pass on that you think could really benefit someone? Yeah, it's a really good question, um, and I mean, I've got lots of advice, but I just don't know. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. No, 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 I mean, I, it's like, I just, no, 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 it's fine, and, and just actually just quickly going back to your final, previous point, it's like, I, I realise sometimes I can be a bit jovial, and you're absolutely right, this is a serious topic, and uh, no. it, it, it needs, you know, it, it deserves a serious approach, but um, but yeah, I think after spending a lot of time seriously it's like only now I start to see the chinks of light of like my old personality which is this a bit jovial and stuff but anyway um, darling that's you know yeah. I'm just quickly on that I think when you get to the stage where we we've been through the 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 dark side and the rough side it's it's not a bad thing if we can look back and it no. you know sometimes I wish that I could look back and not always carry the guilt, you know, go back to them places, but it is what it is with me. But so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I just think that obviously we need we need to um, learn and, and spread the awareness, as I always say. But yeah. yeah, if you've got just any advice that you, before we wrap up, what you think maybe would be beneficial to someone or. Yeah, no, definitely. Um... I suppose um, I suppose the thing is it's like it's about putting like roadblocks in place for example so like uh, if you go back prior to that I mean it's like you, you might know that you've got a problem or you might suspect something is up or no. you might kid yourself oh it's fine but actually like if you check your finances and stuff um, so that would be one I mean there's lots of tools out there so to put like roadblocks in um, so stopping gambling, um, you can. There's a new scheme called Talk Band Stop, which you can speak to the National Gambling Helpline. That's what I did for me to self exclude from casinos. That took me years. I don't want to just be like, oh, I had a gambling problem and then I rang them up. I, it took me uh, so long before yeah. I had. It, I knew I had a problem to actually doing that. Um, but to, to self exclude, um, that includes, like you say, Gam Stop as well, uh, Gam Ban as well, which blocks. Um, software uh, on all your devices and stuff that's a really good one um, it's then so those are the kind of stopping the gambling side of things but the other side of things it's then the mental health aspect yeah. which yeah. is the self care so um, it, stopping gambling is one thing but actually the, the road of recovery whatever you want to use whatever term you want to use is stopping, stopping is one thing but then it's a whole process of like, I'm going to sound a bit hippy dippy, but finding yourself like, what matters to you, and like you say, because you're going to have, you're going to carry, like you say, a lot of guilt and shame and embarrassment, and you're going to feel, um, yeah, in a really, really odd, odd, weird place. Um, but it's it's then you can't do this on your own like that's one thing I figured you cannot do it on your own you need support around you so um, another thing would be if it is about the finances like I've spoken to a few people a lot of them um, have handed over control to like their missus or something yeah. of, their yeah, of, yeah. Their, of their control you know, of their finances that's that's another big um, step that they, they've done um, people have gone people go to GA um People are a member of support groups. I'm a member of Now We Win, which is exercise based support group. You, you check in and accountability. Um, but then, like I say, a lot of self care, mental health stuff, which is. I think it, I couldn't sleep. Like, could I just sleep went out completely out the windows up to the early hours gambling. So, honestly, just things like. It sounds really trivial because my mum would always say this to me here. I'd be like, oh, shut up. Like, come on. But, but like, a good night's sleep. Um, waking up at the same sort of time, having a routine. Because you go from being ill disciplined as a gambler, I was completely, I had no discipline whatsoever, completely out of control, 
to then actually having like routine, uh, good diet, exercise, um, journaling as well really yeah. helped. I had a real big, the other day I was like, felt really tired and I was up, it was late at night and there was a bit of a, not a trigger, but it was like, whoa, this is really where I was before. I'm just like, yeah. I feel crap. So I would just log on and I was like, no, 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 I'll just do some journaling. So journaling really helps. I know it helps a lot of other people. Um, I, I mean, God, I could give. I, I could just keep going, and I, I know we've got. No, no, nah, so. nah, I, th- I think you've made some uh, obviously some good points there in, in ways in which you can help yourself, and and also people can help you. Like you said, maybe I've touched on it before in some videos. If you've got a supportive family member or friend who you trust who can, in the first stages, even if you don't want to stop completely, if you just want to break, who can maybe help you look after your your money or your card and. And help you manage your money coming in as well, and so you're not, you know, maybe you don't have to do it alone. And if you are struggling to manage your money coming into outgoing, and and therefore you think we can't meet ends, I'm not calling anyone thick by any means, but maybe if it's just sometimes getting a little bit on top, and you can, and I think it's important to reach out. And I'm sure you know your close friends and your family will really care for you would sooner that than than you struggle alone, um, yeah. as I always say. Yeah. But um, just yeah. ju- just on your story, then is there anything else you? I mean, my I've got an idea in mind where I think, as I said, two channels together. You know, I, I, you've, 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 I'm very grateful for you to coming on uh, and and speaking about your story. Um, I think it can only help spread the awareness, and you know, the more people that that feel they can do it, the better. Um, is there anything you'd like to touch on or, or would you be up for maybe a part two in the future at some point um, I mean, not necessarily on your story if, you, if or just for a gambling discussion and maybe touch on as both of stories if that's something that oh mate I'd love to I'd love to and, and, and mate if you want to come on a, a podcast I'd love to host you as a guest and um, this is amazing I'd, sorry <laughs> I just want to touch on it really quickly um, but there is something incredibly powerful about finding people that have had the same experience as you. Yeah. Like this is this tonight has been however long it's been, forty minutes or an hour, of, you know, of, of therapy for me. And um, I spoke to a guest recently, who a podcast guest, and he said something. I was like, "Wow, that makes sense," because yeah. you feel so alone, like you say, to know that you're not alone. You feel so alone, so alienated, and so different to everyone else that. The day you find out there's someone else that's gone through the same thing as you, it's like, oh my God, there's other people like that. Absolutely. Uh, on the planet. Like, I'm not alone anymore. So that's why I understand why a lot of people love GA. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, um, yeah, I would absolutely love to. It's been, it's been nothing but a pleasure, my friend. Brilliant. Well, we'll get Alex on for a part two and you may see me pop up on uh, the Invisible Addiction podcast and... Um, like I said, we, I certainly don't claim to be an expert on gambling addiction by any means, but what I am an expert in is having lived the addiction and uh, can only speak from that experience and and, that, and just pass on you know, what worked for me and I'm sure same with Alex and, and also the, the lengths and just speaking about it again, people can relate and if you are struggling, as I always said, please, 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 don't feel that you're the only one who was who was going through this, and and please seek help. I mean, I'm going to put some in the description below, some websites and access to um, different help out there. But also, if I'm sure Alex will agree, if you if you want to send me a message uh, on Twitter, my my email and my Twitter is in the description below, and I will, if Alex is okay with it, provide his in the description below. Um, and just closing off, I definitely, um, without being biased, actually check out Alex's channel, um, The Invisible Addiction. I think it's um, really something that can benefit the. I, I know you do podcasts, you put them on YouTube, but also you you put them on um, other outlets as well, where you don't have to leave your YouTube window open. And I think that's something that that also is helping people because the. They've got better access to it, and more people, you know, tuning in. Surely you're going to reach some person who really needs it. And um, yeah, I recommend Alex's channel definitely. And 
Uh, we'll catch you hopefully in a couple of weeks on the next one. Um, but for now, is there anything else you'd like to touch on, Alex? Because I'm rambling a little bit there. I, I, I do this sometimes, but I am rambling and oh, people. Mate, join the club. Join the club. I'm, I'm rambling. But, on, but genuinely, on. check out Alex's channel. I'll leave a description mm -hmm. in the below. That, that's very kind of you to say. Um, I haven't got anything to add other than to say thank you so much for having me on. And My also, pleasure. if people do want to reach out to me, please do. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to say the right thing back to you, but I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. But if, if, if people want to have a phone call, I'll pick up the phone. Just want to send a message. I'll, I'll have a chat. Um, as I say, I'm not I'm not a trained counsellor or anything like that. Like you say, I can only give experience like yourself. So um, yeah, that's what I would like to say. And um, thank you, thank you so much. Great stuff. And as for my channel, um, Second Chance, we've got. Well, I said we as I was another person, it's just me. Um, I have recorded some videos, and they will be out in the next week or two, um, touching on a whole variety of topics, including the lengths I went to to gamble, um, the, the frequently asked questions to a gambling addict and, and just my views on, on things in the gambling industry. Um, so check out those below. Um, and yeah, I will catch you on the next one, folks. Thank you, Alex.